Hello, this is Alan from Technology Moments and welcome to this new short video in which we'll share with you the experience we had configuring and setting up the Omada EAP610 access point with Wi-Fi 6. First, we'll see how to make a standalone installation as you would if you were gonna just use one AP at home or office with little complication. We will also configure it uh, by joining it to our Omada Business Network Controller using the Omada Windows-based software controller, a procedure that applies also if you have the software installed on the computer or if you have acquired an OC200 Omada controller or an Omada OC300. Either of them will work the same. It comes with everything you need to install it, either near an electrical outlet or power it directly from the switch with power over Ethernet+. Plus. Also, install it on the wall, ceiling or drywall. At first glance, the UAP is monumental, and here the comparison with a unified APAC Pro, that although it resembles the size of a UAP AC HD, the truth is not even close to it in global volume. As we can see in the specifications, this access point can be powered by switches that provide power over Ethernet Plus, so in this case we're gonna test it in this way not only to monitor its use, but to know exactly the power consumption it has. From being completely off to being ready and provisioned, it can take around 80 to 90 seconds. Let's see then how to make a standalone quick setup in scenarios in which, for example, we have a large office and we need a single access point that can address the needs of our internal network clients and changes will probably not be very frequent. For this particular scenario, we recommend to use the Omada mobile application, which we easily find in the app stores, download it and install it. After we start it, we will give all the relevant permissions to the app, among which will be the access to the microphone, the location, and once we enter, we'll have the option to go to controllers, in case that we already have a controller in the network, and if not, we'll go to the third tab in the upper right section in which the access points that are available to be adopted at the moment will appear. We are simply going to tap Setup and it'll ask us for a username and password, which will be the administrator usernames and passwords of these devices from now on. And we continue. Here it will allow us to choose between the 2.4 and the 5 GHz networks. We can assign them different names, unlike what we can do in the controller, that they're gonna be having exactly the same name, either in 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. It is quite useful. This checkbox is also gonna be very useful as it allows us to have the same network names simply with the 5G suffix appended to it. It is important that we understand that this copy is not gonna mix them, but what it'll do is simply allow copying or pre-filling these fields. At the end of the process, and for those who work with smart devices that connect to 2.4 gigahertz networks, the idea is to leave the network type differentiation uh, option active. We can then name the access points as we've just seen. Here you have access to some other settings like transmitting power, channel, change the state of the little LED on the front of the device and many others. Ideal for devices that work independently. So we're gonna connect to our network and we're gonna watch a little preview of what you're gonna see in our performance video from this access point, which is really great actually has really exceptional stability and will allow you to have a convergence of many users and have a very high traffic and user density. Here, in this particular case, the limitation of this test is not really the speed of the Wi-Fi, but it is the speed that my internet service provider is giving me. So really, here, who's being my bottleneck is the service provider. On the other hand, if what we want is to start our business network or an awesome home networking infrastructure, you can do it with these great devices. We will then install the Omata software controller application or just the Omata controller that we find on the TP-Link page. And as we said in our video related to that topic, it is easier to find it by doing a quick search on Google. Once we have managed to install it, for which we recommend you watch our detailed video regarding this Omata controller, which is very easy by the way, we proceed to import our device so that it will self-configure and receive all the parameters that we have detailed in the wireless LAN category. This procedure will be as easy as going to the devices category where you will just click on this adopt button and wait a couple minutes. The interesting thing about these unified networks is that in this step we would have been able to adopt 10, 20 or 50 access points, simplifying the workload of network administrators. Also, a very small change in some of the parameters from the controller will provision all the access points on the network. 
exactly the same as it happens with Unify. All those parameters that we've previously configured, not only in the network configuration, but in the configuration for guests' Wi-Fi, captive portals, or gateways, will be sent to the device as they are provisioned. It is very important that we understand that if for some reason the Omata network controller is not available at the time, when we turn on the access point, it will take the last configurations available and with which it worked previously. Of course, services such as the captive portal or hotspot as well as the network event log will need to have it up and running for them to work, either as software or as a hardware device such as the ones we mentioned earlier. As for the experience of speed, stability and scope of this access point, we can say that it is way superior for those at a greater price range in Unify. You'll soon find a video in our channel related to our experience with this access point on these topics exclusively. We cannot yet argue anything regarding durability in which all the Unify devices that we have tested except for a single G3 Flex camera have had a simply extraordinary durability and we've had to replace Unify devices for convenience and not because they have failed over time. Okay guys, so that was all for today. We greatly appreciate that you've seen this video. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments and we'll try to answer it as fast as possible. We also appreciate your support by subscribing to our channel and liking this video. See you next time.